Hey, it's Mazzy, and it's been a whirlwind dig on this Coleman collection. The Coleman collection, if you haven't um, been listening to me and watching me several times, is the collection that uh, Coffee Dave and I purchased f um, from my late friend Coleman's sister. We went to the Bay Area, boxed them all up. Uh, you can look at those videos. I'm sure most of you are watching this have already seen those and uh, seen some of the collection. It's overwhelming. We are going to have um, possibly a series of sales. I think we're going to start one as early as uh, this week, hopefully Wednesday, maybe. No, but there'll be a post. So uh, subscribe, click the bell, and you'll see the post. I want to show you a few things uh, that are very special to me that I pulled for myself from the collection, just to give you a little idea. Um, this is not everything. There are a lot of great catalog items, but these are some very special things. This is a, an original copy on track records of Are You Experienced? UK Mono. Jimi Hendrix, obviously. Coleman bought it at Village Music for $20. Village Music was this great classic store in Mill Valley, California. He probably uh, bought this at the height of the CD era. And it's pretty nice. I mean, there's a few scratches, but it looks really lovely. Track Records, of course, was uh, the record label uh, Lambert and Stamp created for The Who. They were the management of The Who. And uh, some of The Who records were later, uh, like Tommy. And, and this next record, The Who Sell Out. This is also a track release. One of my, this is my favorite Who album. And this is an, an original tr track release as well. Distributed by Polydor. So I'm very excited by these. I gotta say this. I was never a purist of trying to find original copies. My friend Coleman was, especially UK original copies, things like track records, pie records for the kinks. Rolling Stones Records, uh, Pink Label, UK, Island Records. Um, I'm going to come to a few other things in a minute, but this is something that excited me as well. Classic Records. Uh, this is Super Vinyl Classic Records, Quiex, 200 gram of Who's Next. This is uh, one of the first great audiophile uh, labels. This is from 2005. So I haven't listened to this yet, but um, it, those of you who know audiophile labels and pressings, uh, you'll know how wonderful this record is. So the Who, of course, Who's Next, uh, wonderful record. Right. Two other items that were really interesting to me. Uh, one is an autographed copy, a Swedish version of the album by ABBA. Coleman and I saw ABBA on their Only American Tour in 1979 at the Concord Pavilion just uh, at near San Francisco. And so it's really great, really rare to find a, I mean, an autographed copy. So I love that. I didn't even know he had that. And this is really cool too. The debut percent Pretenders albums. Uh, this is a UK copy autographed by all four original members. So uh, you might know who, if you follow them, Pete Farndom and um, James Honeyman Scott died I think like 38 years ago, within a year apart. So this is a very early autograph signed copy that Coleman had his collection of the Pretender. So kind of cool there too. So some rare, again, records, some not so rare, but this is one that I've always wanted that I just didn't have. And this is um, Julie Driscoll and Brian Auger. Love this record. And I they do a cool version of Season on the Witch on here, the Donovan song. I just never had this record. But I've always loved this record. Julie Driscoll. Just love that cover. And this is like a beautiful copy. Beautiful American copy. Stereo on Atco. Atco Records. Um, now these... I haven't had these in years. I, I have one of these albums already. But these are uh, original UK island copies of uh, The Whalers. Uh, Bob Murray and The Whalers Live. UK copy original of Vernon. As I mentioned, you know, Coleman was a big fan, as I am, of Pink Label Island Records. I don't have a lot. And this obviously is a Pink Label with the obligatory... Hold on a second. 
Oh, you didn't. Let's surprise. Let's just, let me try to surprise you. <laughs> God, I can't. Oh, that's how it goes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like a child, aren't I? Um, but look at that luscious pink label. You know, if you ever see pink label, you guys in the UK see these a lot. We don't here in the in the States. We see them occasionally and we love them. We cherish them. I don't have this record anymore. This is a lovely pink label. Island of uh, Traffic. Last exit. There you go. That's a little later issue with the pink labels, I recall. And um, then a pink label. This one's a little messed up cover-wise. The record looks pretty good of the debut. <laughs> God, what the fuck? Love this record. Is Mr. Fantasy on the UK version? Come on, where's the... Okay, you want me to open it? I want to open it because I need to see this. It's really messed up. Yeah, pink label. Dealer. It's colored rain. Dear Mr. Fantasy, yeah, ends um, the side. Yeah, great record. And a couple other things. Um, I just got to show this. Okay, this is a music on vinyl. This is probably a later edition of West Side Story. And Coleman, one his favorite musical was West Side Story. And literally, I found eight different copies and versions of West Side Story in the collection. There's uh, half of them or two thirds of them are the uh, motion picture soundtrack. Of course, uh, Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim. What a great, great uh, score, book and score. Be interesting to see how this um, there's a Spielberg movie version to come out a remake. We'll see. You know, I mean, he he can do good things, but um, Maria, I know a girl named Maria. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from the first cigarette to your last time of day. When you're a jet, do 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 do. Anyway, he has so many copies of this. I should like give a copy free away with every purchase um, from the Coleman collection. I just love that. It's just so dearing to me that he had uh, so many copies, including the Broadway uh, original score. He just loved West Side Story. I think that's a that's a cool thing. And then um, lastly, I'm finally, I have some reissues, but I'm finally building my Aretha Franklin collection. Mono. I didn't look at what pressings he were. Like he bought this for 25 bucks. So this is probably a very early pressing, if not a, a original. Beautiful shape. I have some reissues again of some of these, but Aretha now. Love Aretha. Lady Soul in mono and Lady Soul in stereo. As I said, if you've been watching these videos, big R&B guy, big soul. Uh, Aretha Franklin, of course. Never loved a man the way I love you, including respect. Either. Now this is later. This is this is that wasn't totally successful, but this is the record uh, that Curtis Mayfield uh, um, produced for her. Of course, the great young, gifted in black. Love this record. Aretha in Paris. And this, you know, we all know how Aretha was just the queen of soul in so many ways. But did you know she was the queen of Zoom? Who's Zooming who? God, what a prophecy, right? Now this is um, this is like an 80s record, right? Ooh, a trumpet solo by Dizzy Gillespie. You know, I don't think I've ever heard this record. I know it's more of Clarence Clements, the sax, uh, Springsteen sax player, E Street Band. Oh, the do, oh, I remember. I have, I had this, he had the single of this, of. Uh, Sisters are doing it for themselves, a duet with the Eurythmics with Annie Lennox. I know that. And this is produced by um, Rita Franklin. This is more, and Dave Stewart and, and all that. So this is obviously, you know, kind of a comeback in a way. Again, I don't know all the details, which came back and which didn't. But that song, Sisters, was all over the radio, all over MTV uh, back in the 80s. A lovely record. And this is still in shrink. This has a price tag of $3.99 on sale. So, there you go. And more, coming, more. Coleman Collection. Now here's an, another original copy, and this is uh, the debut, actually the solo album by, um, the only album by Blind Faith. Of course, uh, this young woman um, is considering a lawsuit against Blind Faith. Actually not. I've heard of that whole Nirvana bullshit anyway. Um, 
This came out in America with two different covers. You had an option, and I have an American version, early version, and I used to have the original cover uh, with the group. Really kind of an ugly cover. But uh, this was a really beautiful, clean copy there. This I've never seen. I love Rod Stewart's Gasoline Alley, and this is on the Vertigo label. Different cover uh, than the version released in the States. Lovely gatefold. If I can open it. And let's see what this label looks like. Oh, this is kind of this. Look at that. I haven't looked it up yet. I haven't looked these up. Those of you who know better, know better, and you can correct me. Now, this is the grail I found so far uh, for me personally. And I think Coleman was holding out on me because we used to always be in search of this record, and I never knew he got one. Of course, it's 1968 album bookends. Not so rare, really, right? However, the mono. The mono of this is extremely rare. Now, I looked it up on Discogs. It's not crazy expensive. I mean, it's like the $75 range, a lot for a record. But I never, ever have seen one of these in person, and I played it. A few little uh, surface noises, but this, these all Columbia two eyes and the six eyes of other Columbia records usually sound pretty good, even if they're you. They look like they're kind of all kind of wimbly wombly wambly. Uh, great Richard Avedon photograph on the cover of this album. My favorite son of Garfunkel album from May '68. But getting a mono, this has been a grail for me. Every time I see this record, I look. I'm hoping for a mono and. Um, you know, I'm going to hold on to this because I know Coleman probably cherished this. And he didn't tell me he got it. At least I don't remember him telling me. And I think I would have because every time we'd go digging together, every time we'd see copies of this, we'd pick it up. So that's kind of cool. Um, a few more things. This is something that I cherish. Again, as I said, Coleman really liked um, original and uh, mono albums. And these are original DECA monos of a lot of the Stones records. Of course, I have the reissue mono box, which is great, but having original and close to original mono early pressings of uh, the Rolling Stones catalog, most of their catalog, not every single record, but we got the Rolling Stones number two in mono. Uh, this is actually a stereo. This is Aftermath in Stereo, one of my favorite of the early Stones albums from 1966. Mono version of Out of Our Heads. This is a stereo uh, UK comp, the great comp, Big Hits, Highest Tide and Green Grass. Of course, in America, it first sported that cover, and that's a cool fisheye shot for the UK. This is a stereo, obviously, because it only came out in stereo, but UK of uh, Get Your Yah Yahs Out, the live 1969 album, and of course, with the late, great Charlie Watts on the cover. Really wonderful image of him. And the first year I saw the Stones was uh, 1969. Stereo, Between the Buttons, UK again. This is a stereo, but this is great. Um, of course, amongst my favorite, one of my, by my second favorite, actually, let's go out of order here. This is my favorite uh, Stones album, and this is a UK original of Beggar's Banquet. Going back to this, what's great about this, there was a while that they used to put this little hole there. So if it was red, it was stereo. Excuse me, if it was red, it was mono, and if it was blue, it was stereo. So I love that bit. That's really cool. So check these out. He bought this for $5.66, made in England. You know, he was buying a lot of records when all of us, a lot of us were buying CDs and pushing our records aside. He never went to CD era very much um stones stones so that's really cool and lastly for this segment this is cool he got this set of promos um i think i remember when he got these in the 80s uh they reissued obviously all the beatle albums again on on this um on this label and i believe are these wally presses he might be wally cuts What's nice about this series, they're 80s promos of the American albums. This is just before they went to CDs, so this is probably early to mid-80s. I haven't looked these up again, and I used to know this stuff. And I, You know, I have all these records, but having these gold stamp promos, because even if 
uh, the records aren't new. When I get when a new sort of reissue program comes out, labels would give salespeople a lot of promos. So <laughs> the Beatles story, Elsa Marine, Beatles six, of course Beatles second album possibly the greatest rock and roll album that the Beatles ever put out. This comp in America was fantastic in terms of a, a great rocker. And then in this, this is not part, oh, this is part of this collection, a promo stamped of the Hollywood Bowl album that came out in 77, I believe. Uh, yeah, kind of fun. So I'm digging through this uh, collection a little by little. You've seen some of those videos. Mazzy loves you. And uh, thanks, Coleman, for the music and the times. We had a great time. We saw a lot of great music together, shared a lot of laughs, and um, memory's going to continue through this music, that's for sure. And I'm going to bore you with my uh, Coleman Collection videos, I'm sure.